Hey, friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I want to show off what I believe is a powerhouse reverb that comes right with Logic, and that is Chromaverb. I would say that the reverb folder in Logic is quite well-rounded. I mean, we have Chromaverb, which is a algorithmic reverb with 14 different spaces to work with, followed by Space Designer, which is a convolution-style reverb that emulates different spaces, speakers, special effects. It's just such a wide variety. And then we have Enverb, which allows you to get pretty crazy with reverb envelopes. And Silververb, if you're looking for, I would say, a more straightforward reverb experience. And then that doesn't even include pedal board and the reverbs that come with that or Amp Designer or anything else. Chromaverb came out in 2018 with the 10.4 update. And it's just such a versatile algorithmic reverb. If we open Chromaverb, take a look at the main page here, we get this massive graphic display, which I absolutely love. And it may seem like a novelty, but I find it very informative, very easy to work with. And then we have so many controls. We have the usual suspects of attack, size of the space, density, decay. And then on the details page, we have an output EQ. So it's essentially a channel EQ for the reverb itself followed by different shades of quality of our reverb, modulation, early to late reflections, and even managing the stereo width of the reverb itself. And we just take a quick listen to this piano loop. We can just see how amazing this graphic display is. I mean, it's really slick and the graphical display isn't just for show, it actually, changes based on the density, decay, and distance controls. Now, if you don't see this graphic display on your Mac system, you do have to own a Mac that supports the metal framework for graphic processing. If you don't own this style of Mac, then you're not gonna see any sort of graphical display. And it stinks, but it, it just happens to be the way it is. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through every single parameter. I mean, if we just quickly go through, it's attack, adjust the time that it takes the reverb to reach its maximum density while for some other rooms it adjusts volume over time. The size is the size of the space, so 0% would be you know, very small, 100% quite large. Density adjusts the relationship of both the early and late reflections. Decay is how long the reverb takes to decay. And distance is how close or far you feel in the space itself. And then if we go right here to where it says concert hall, we have 14 different spaces to choose from. And if you think about it, it's not just one reverb. It's actually like 14 different reverb units because each room has its own distinct characteristics and the response of the different controls are slightly different depending on the space. We're not gonna walk through all of the rooms, but if you want a smaller space, just imagine you probably want a room. If you want a large space, you probably want a hall. If you're looking for a more special effect, try Strange Room or Bloomy, because they're pretty cool. And then we have the dry wet sliders allow us to adjust the dry signal against the reverb signal. So the dry is no reverb while wet is the reverb. And the rest we'll start to dig into. Now, number one, what I love about Chromaverb is that you can actually sync the pre-delay and the decay itself to the tempo of your project, which is pretty awesome. Pre-delay is literally a delay before the reverb does its thing. So we may wanna create sort of a separation before the reverb kicks in. So our original signal sounds distinct, but we get a distinct tail after the original signal. Or you could create a closer pre-delay so the original signal and reverb kind of sound like the same signal. We can either adjust this by milliseconds, just by dragging up and down on this value, or clicking on this note, you're able to actually sync it based on beats. So you can choose every quarter note, eighth note, or 128th beat of a bar. Let's select a quarter note, just so we can hear this. I'm gonna set this to 100%. So we're really gonna hear this effect. We're gonna hear the original signal and then the reverb. You hear how it kind of ramps up? Now let's pick something like 30 second note. And these can be really helpful. If you think of a vocal, maybe you want to have a long tail after the vocal, pick a longer pre-delay. For decay, we can also sync this as well. So we'll turn this off. We'll set this back to where about it was and then set the decay to sync to the project as well. So we can go anywhere between, you know, seconds way up there, and then this syncs, you know, based on beats and bars, and you can go pretty high up. Check it out. And I think it's really cool that the graphical display actually 
changes based on some of these parameters. If we set the density all the way down, the little dots are gonna become more prominent or less. It depends on the space. It's a little easier to see with the dark room. So we'll set these down to zero and we'll just watch the little dots as I push the density up and down. So that indicates what the reflections are doing in the space. Are we getting more reflections, less? And then if we play with the decay and the distance, let's switch back to the concert hall. And as I push decay up, it's gonna get more cloudy. So it's like more sound is in the space and taking more time to evaporate. And then push the distance up in tandem and you'll see it saturate even further. So it really is informative, it's not just for show. And what's even cooler is, is that we have this freeze button, which allows us to recycle the reverb at infinity. So it just keeps going and going and going. So I'll set this to something more respectable and let's just watch it happen. Pretty cool and ambient, but check it out. The freeze button resets itself upon playback once you stop and start up again. So if you want the freeze button to react at a specific point all the time or do the thing all the time, then you're gonna need to automate this parameter. So right there, we've already explored so much. And then we have the damping EQ, which allows us to actually adjust the frequency response of the decay itself. So watch the graphic display as I'm boosting and cutting with this low shelf and high shelf. I like how the graphical display actually like reduces the colors or brightens them up based on how we're boosting or cutting these frequencies. Now I know it's pretty abstract, but it's related to the decay of the reverb. Whereas on the details page, we have an actual EQ for EQing the reverb. And this is really helpful. This allows you to fine tune and kind of bracket your sound. And I'm sure most of us are pretty familiar with the channel EQ, won't dig into it, but I wanna point your attention to the bottom section of Chromevert because there's just so much more you can use. First, we have the quality section, which seems kind of like an odd thing to have. We have low, high, or ultra quality. But if you think about it, it's kind of like choosing between a low quality vintage reverb up to a high quality ultra pristine reverb. Low has a grainier texture with more noisy modulation. High sounds clean and precise and ultra sounds really expensive. So if you think of 14 different rooms times three different quality per room, so you essentially have 42 different spaces to work with in Chromoverb, ranging in vintage quality to high quality. That is awesome. And in fact, let's go to the main page and let's set the dry to zero, wet to 100%, make sure it's not too crazy here, and just listen to the difference in quality. You know, let's pick a different space just so we have something to compare to. We'll pick maybe Bloomy because it is nuts. Check it out. Cool. Moving forward, we have a modulation section. So kind of imagine a chorus plugin. A lot of the Logic presets and patches have chorus plugin on an instance of Space Designer. Just to give a little more movement, a little less of a static reverb sound. And with Chromaverb, you can choose between three different LFOs. You have a sine wave or more random or noisy. And let's just crank this up to 100% and we'll play around with the mod speed and we'll switch between the mod sources. And we can even smooth the effect as well. Now, 
Now, it's not sort of distasteful, but when you set the depth to something like 10%, then it seems a little less offensive. Cool. Then we can also adjust the early and late reflections in relation to each other. You can actually set this to 100% only early reflections or 100% late reflections. But if you want to dig deeper into the main controls here, such as attack, size, decay, I suggest setting the early to 100% and then playing with attack, size, density. And then if you want to play around with decay and distance, set it to 100% late. And then you're gonna start to understand how these things are reacting against each other. And then of course, try 50-50. And then we have the option to adjust the stereo width of chroma verb. And I think this is amazing. We can choose anything between a mono reverb all the way up to an ultra stereo reverb. Just setting the width to 0% is mono, 100% is full stereo, and 150 is beyond full stereo. So you're kind of creating a unnatural situation. But let's take a listen, starting from zero, and just work our way up. That's pretty awesome. But then we also have this option for mono maker. And what this does is, is wherever we set the slider, basically 94 Hertz and below is gonna be sum to mono. And then everything above 94 Hertz is in stereo. And this can be really helpful when you're working with a mix or an instrument where there's a low end instrument. I mean, I think of drums. You have a kick drum and you don't really want the kick drum to be all over the place in the stereo spectrum because it just creates an indistinct sound, can mess with mono compatibility. So you could set this to like 100 hertz and then everything below 100 hertz is in mono. So your reverb is tucked, but then everything above 100 hertz is getting that spaciousness that it needs. Think like the snare and the overhead, so on and so forth. So let's tuck this down. We'll set this to 150% and then start to play with the mono maker slider. Check it out. <laughs> So 5,000 hertz and below is some to mono. That is really slick. So I hope that this video is demonstrating to you that Chromaverb is awesome. It's got so much going on, so many controls for fine tuning. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow in this series.